I'd like you to also uh, assess for me, you know, the kind of women that we are seeing getting elected to panchayats. Uh, I mean, it, the panchayat reservation bill uh, has been functioning for a long time in Karnataka, even longer. Uh, and there seems to be a big much so, uh, do you think that these women, um, I mean, a sufficient number of these women, not all obviously, are trained enough to, you know, contest for uh, the legislatures or for parliament? You see, what I'm trying, uh, why are we making, first of all, have we ever judged the men who are elected, for example? Have we ever talked about what is the legislation they've supported? What have they done to make India a better place? What have they done for poor people? But all these questions are asked of women who suffer so many disabilities. And the biggest disability that they suffer from is poverty and patriarchy. The combination is deadly. So the women who are elected, we cannot generalize about them. For example, if you look at Kerala, the women who are elected to panchayats and local bodies, most of them are activists. Mm. Most of them are activists of the women's movement. Mm. They have not been given the, a ticket mm. because the seat has been, uh, you know, a reserved for a woman. The husband or the brother or the father cannot contest. They're not proxies for anybody. They are women who are activists who have fought and struggled and so on and so forth. So their role is different. The way they uh, can conduct themselves is different. The way they assume responsibility is different. And you don't see this phenomenon of uh, Pradhan Pati and Sarpanch Pati and all that in Kerala, which is so rampant in the north. So you can't generalize about it. When you think, think of the disabilities, the amazing uh, work that many women have done and the kinds of odds that they have faced is quite remarkable. But at the same time, you have to uh, recognize the fact that <coughs> so many of these women are just not allowed to function. Mm. You know, it's their husband who has the stamp, the office stamp, official stamp, the husband who goes to the meeting. It's the husband who decides who the contractor is going to be. It's the husband or the father or the brother who decides all these things. I mean, it's a terrible position. Mm. And the administration is supposed to be punished if they allow the husband uh, you know to come and um, you know assume office where the wife should be they're supposed to be punished but i have not seen that this has happened they do not intervene to help uh, these women to uh, give them the required uh, you know uh, structural help mm. to perform and to uh, mm. undertake their responsibilities so these are very big problems and they are not to be solved by women, they have to be solved by governments, by administration, by society at large. This cannot be done by women. I mean, you're asking those who are the victims and the sufferers to, you know, uh, to deal with what is making them suffer. It's a very unfair thing. Secondly, I would like to say that actually, if people had their way, they would do away with those reservations too. 